I just wanted to mention as an ecotherapist, the whole field that we call eco dream work. And some of you are familiar with Steve Eisenstadt and with Lauren Schneider, both of whom are active in the International Association for the Study of Dreams. And they've put forward the whole idea that we can get direct communication from the rest of nature through observing in our dreams the natural images that arise or the voices that we hear. And I think that's really powerful. And, um, but what I'd actually like to talk about is the, um, not necessarily the nighttime dreaming, but what we can be doing in, the, in terms of our waking dreams, in terms of our vision, because one of the things that I see is that especially young people are um, suffering from lack of a vision of an alternative vision. What, what is our dream of what this could be like if we were doing it right, if we were doing it in harmony with the rest of nature? So that's, I think, an important part of this. And Craig Chalkwist and I have been working on coming up with a number of principles of eco-resilience, getting the idea of, um, as Jeff mentioned, you know, we're, we're going to be going through some rough patches. What, what are the characteristics that we can put forward and dream forward about how we can be resilient as individuals, as communities, as families, um, as ecosystems? What, what, are the keys to our resilience. And um, both Craig and I have taken the permaculture design course. And one of the things I noticed about that course is how hopeful that that whole approach is and how empowering, particularly to young people, where instead of just the focus on all the problems and the difficulties and the frightening things, even though we do need to talk about and deal with that, there's a focus on here's some practical things you can do and you can empower yourself and your family and your community um, in, in really uh, ways that will allow you to be as eco resilient as possible. And um, in terms of inner eco resilience, um, I'm glad you mentioned Carolyn Baker, Bonnie, because I love her work and um, my husband and I were involved in uh, just here locally a group where we did a, a book discussion group of one of Carolyn's books, Navigating the Coming Chaos. And that was really, really helpful for us because um, I don't know how it is where everyone else lives, but it's, it's not a large group of people here who are actually willing to even engage about what is really happening and the, all the feelings about it. Um, a colleague and I wrote something about what we call the waking up syndrome using Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's Stages of Death and Dying to kind of look at all the stages you could go through as you wake up. You're going from complete oblivion and denial all the way through just getting an idea, oh, you know, there's something is happening, and maybe I don't want to think about it. And as you said, Bonnie, we can distract ourselves with television or a million other things, and then we don't have to think about it. But then it'll come up in a dream, perhaps, or a, a, a chance remark, or something you see on Facebook, and suddenly it's back in your face again. Maybe it's one of the articles that Jeff is mentioning, where suddenly there's some new news, and it seems like every week there's new news saying, um, as you mentioned, that it's, things are going much quicker than we had thought. And now it's not just fossil fuels we need to worry about, but suddenly there's these methane issues coming up and whoops, what are we going to do about that? And I think that if we're talking about an ongoing trauma and, and what um, James Howard Kunstler calls the long emergency, it's serial trauma. As um, Sarah Edwards, the therapist Sarah Edwards describes it. And I think this is where, you know, she's compared it with, with the Elizabeth Kubler-Ross thing. It's like, it's certainly horrible and difficult to deal with um, a terminal diagnosis in terms of your personal life or a loved one's personal life. But we're getting this endless stream of um, shocks in a way or trauma where we just keep getting the bad news. And that's why I keep wanting to flip us to a dream of how we can get through this. 
and what are the positive things that we can focus on and do. Um, and coming back to this uh, book uh, club that we did, it was just really very helpful to be able to have that conversation, um, a little bit like what Sally was mentioning too, where, and it, it's really true what she said, that we, you, you know, one, one session, one person is up, and the next session somebody else is up, and another person is down, and somehow through reading the book and listening to what Carolyn had to say and then uh, responding to that and dealing with our own emotions, dreams that we had, conversations, news articles, whatever came up, that we sort of developed, I think, an emotional eco-resilience where we could talk about it, we could deal with it, and we had a sense that we weren't necessarily going to get overwhelmed and that there were other people in the situation with us that we could look to. So um, I'm just looking at my little notes here to see if there's anything else I need to add to that. But I think, oh, just one last thing was the idea of a waking dream in nature, which is another way I think that we can um, experience this larger psyche communicating with us is actually to spend much more time with nature, whether it's little nature nearby or it's big wilderness, and to open ourselves up to what attracts our attention, what begins to communicate with us. And it's, perhaps it's not the same thing as the nighttime dreams, but I think it's also just another way that we can be guided by the earth and by the larger psyche of nature in terms of what what we need to be doing individually and collectively um, to deal with what's happening on our planet.